for those of you who don't know, the, the Medicines Patent Pool, uh, which I'm the executive director, is a unit aid funded public health organization which is dedicated to accelerating access and innovation in HIV treatment through, and this is the point, uh, the concept of patent sharing and patent pooling. Um, when we look at the future of HIV treatment, um, you know, much has been done, there's a long way to go. The sort of concepts that we're um, thinking as a medicines patent pool where we would like to go is we believe that all people on treatment have access to the best possible regimes, treatment side effects are minimal or non-existent, people can stay on the same treatment without developing resistance, cost is no longer a barrier in determining which treatment to take, the most effective regimes are available as once daily single tablet regimes or in long-acting formulations, and children have access to the best possible treatment that is suitable for their age. I'm sure we all share those objectives. These are the objectives as a public health group that we are seeking to achieve. Now, we have had recent progress. I won't go into all of this. There has been progress, but we need to build on that progress. So, what are the challenges that we are trying to to uh, address in the medicines patent pool. One is accelerating the availability of new ARVs in developing countries. The second is ensuring that these new ARVs become available in the most suitable formulations. And thirdly, promoting robust market competition to bring down the prices of new treatments. So those are the challenges that we seek to address. So we do this in the medicines patent pool, pool through what is you know, it's not rocket science, it's quite a simple concept where we negotiate on a voluntary license basis with patent holders so they will share their intellectual property so we can then sub-license these agreements out to generic manufacturers in an agreed um, geographical scope of countries where we can provide the products quicker, more accessible and cheaper to the people living with HIV. We also seek, and I go into that, to patent share in order to increase the development of new innovations that may be required, particularly in the area of fixed dose combination in children. So let's look at that first challenge, accelerating availability. Now, <clears throat> we've estimated that traditionally the time from FDA approval of a new ARV to the availability of uh, a similar uh, quality assured generic for a developing country has generally been between five to 10 years. So there's that, there is that treatment gap between the developed world and the developing world, and that's what we're seeking to close. And what we are looking to do is to reduce that substantially uh, to between two to three years. Now, as was mentioned before, the patent landscape or the, the, the intellectual property landscape, as you all well know, has changed uh, over the years since the introduction of TRIPS. And if we do not deal with this issue in a collaborative and collective way, we will find that those time lags of getting the products uh, to the developing world will substantially uh, be more complicated. So, when we look at the agreements that we try to, to strike, you can see that um, while we have, I take Dolotegravir as one example, which is our, our most recent uh, agreement, the expiry date there of Dolotegravir is 2026. Um, the date of the license that we've agreed is 2014. Uh, the approval of the originator product was actually in August 2013, and in the case of Europe, January 2014. And we're expecting our manufacturers, the generic manufacturers, to be able to get into the market in the developing countries in 2016. So we've been rapidly able to, we've been able to curtail that delay quite rapidly. Um, and then making sure that they're available in the most uh, uh, suitable formulations. Um, the issue here relates to fixed dose combinations and also formulations of pediatrics, where the gentleman from the floor had mentioned. Uh, and clearly we have situations where we will need a fixed dose combination. One aspect could be patent free, the others could be patented. What we need to do is, is strike an agreement with the patent holder in order that that patent and its knowledge and its technology can be shared. 
Um, in the area of formulations for children, as was also mentioned, we recently launched a pediatric initiative, uh, which a number of you have attended uh, recently. That's with CHAI, with Unit Aid, and with the DNDI. And, our, and our, our objective there is to ensure the acceleration of simpler, uh, of the appropriate products, appropriate treatments, and to get them uh, more quickly developed and more quickly available to children than is currently the case. And we will do that through, again, through a system of intellectual property sharing and development work. Uh, as you can see, the goal then um, is, is to bridge that horrendous gap that exists in the area of, of pediatric treatments. Uh, in the area of new formulations, I won't go into the details of all of these, but as, it, as you can see, we need to ensure that we license in the various uh, intellectual property in order to develop the formulations uh, as, is, as is required in the by the public health community. And then finally, looking at the area of competition, and here is just a good example, through, through our, um, through our sub-licensing agreements, we have already been able to bring down the price in many countries in the area for, for TDF. Uh, and this, of course, can repeat it elsewhere. We do have now a whole series of, of sub-licensing agreements with a whole number of generic companies. We now actually have 10 generic partners, as well as five uh, originator partners uh, in, the, uh, in the medicines patent pool. Um, of course, one of the key challenges is how we're able to address this for middle-income countries. I should stress that uh, all our license agreements do include middle-income countries. Uh, uh, recently, for example, in Dollar Tegra, it's around 70, uh, as well as those in lower, uh, lower income countries. And we are reaching around 90, between 92 and 94 percent of people living with HIV are covered by our licensing agreements. So it was mentioned about one of the ways that people can collaborate together to try and deal with the various new problems that are, that are existing in this area. And one of these, I believe, is to try to work through voluntary licensing and through patent sharing. Thank you. <laughs>